Okay, so in this video, I want to talk to you about time management and optimizing your time throughout your day. Because fact is, as entrepreneurs, we're ambitious types. We want to get the most from every minute we can. And also, in that process, we can sometimes find ourselves really overwhelmed and without enough time. So as a bit of background, my name is Jamie White. I'm a life coach and business mentor. And what I really do is work with people in a more holistic fashion. So whereas others might just keep their focus on professional circumstances, I actually really believe that so much of what we do and how we are personally reflects, reflects itself professionally. So that's actually quite appropriate to this video. Um, in serving up some solutions, I wanna come at it from a holistic perspective. So I wanna kind of think of some of the some of the more personal um, ways of complimenting you as well as the functional professional um, side of things. So the very first one I'm gonna share with you is um, to get up at the same time every day. Um, now this is something I've discovered recently and it's absolutely fantastic. Um, essentially our bodies thrive with consistency when we wake up. Um, and I think anyone actually, when you take a kind of a critical edge and look at, uh, how you are you would notice that like you kind of get into a pattern of getting up at the same time during weekdays and then you sleep in at weekends and then it's really hard to get up again on the monday or tuesday um, whereas actually if we commit ourselves to getting up at the same time every day our body thrives with that consistency and it's very balancing it's very ground grounding it's very calming and that for me is a huge compliment to us as we progress throughout the day because the fact of the matter is is that when we're stressed when we're out of source we make bad decisions and those are the kind of decisions that waste time um, and necessitate more decisions to kind of correct things whereas when we're calm when we're grounded we make good solid strong decisions and i, I love that saying about um a good decision only ever needs to be made once and it will save you time and make you more money. Um, and I think that's, that's really, really appropriate. So that kind of first tip is, um, is not as obvious, but it's something I've, I've really found that as I've gotten up at the same time every day, it's taken stress out of, my, out of me. It's helped bring me more calm and a greater sense of groundedness as a result of that confidence. And I just sense or I feel I flow throughout my day so much better. Um, the next one I want to mention is uh, meditating. There's a great saying about meditating. Everybody should meditate for 20 minutes a day. And if you don't have 20 minutes, you should meditate for an hour. Why? Because it saves you time. Um, really to meditate is to connect with yourself, is to get to know yourself. It is to slow down and allow your thoughts catch up with yourself. It's to quiet in the mind. And what I find is that when I sit and meditate, which literally, you know, it could be sitting down, closing your eyes, and not even trying to clear your mind, just actually allowing whatever thoughts want to come up, come up. And when we do this, I find that it gets rid of a lot of the noise. Um, I find that it, yeah, it brings peace, it brings calm, and after a little while, it starts to help me think quite proactively um, in terms of the time gone by, what what I've done that's worked, what I perhaps have done that hasn't worked and how I could refine for going forward. And then going forward, it helps me kind of pre-plan and think about what decisions I need to make, what actions I need to take. And that fraction of extra thought allows me show up better in my day, allows me make better decisions. And exactly as I kind of covered in the previous point, when we make better decisions, it saves us time. Um, and that, yeah, that is, is so key. So it might seem a little bit wasteful, especially in the mornings when we kind of, we want to rush about our days. But actually, if we take some time to sit with ourselves, you will find yourself having more spaciousness, more calm um, throughout your day ahead. And that will allow you make better decisions, which again will bring you more calm, um, more groundedness, more peace, um, which is what this is all about. Um, the third is almost reinforcing that again. Um, after I meditate, I journal, which, you know, sometimes these broad terms can get quite, can seem quite complicated. Um, and so to break it down, I literally blank sheet of paper, pen, and I ask myself a question like, Jamie, what's on your mind? And I just give myself a little bit of space to flush out whatever distractive thoughts might be floating around in my head. And that is, again, 
so releasing. It just gets the noise out of here and it brings a calm. Um, I then think to myself, I actually quite like my meditation. Uh, what happened over the last few days that's worked well? And I write that down and I generally start to feel a little bit more confident and a little bit more energized by that. And what have I learned from perhaps what didn't go as well as I'd like? And that interesting, it doesn't depress me when I'm kind of going through the, the issues. It actually, again, helps energize me and help me fe- helps me feel all that better because when we take the learnings out of our challenge, we get value from it. And it helps us actually process. It helps us release the frustration. And it makes us feel good because really life is all about learning. It's about experience. It's about growth. And I believe oftentimes when thoughts won't go, go away, it's because we haven't found our meaning or we haven't found our value or our learnings from those times. And what I find is that when I do take the learnings from a past challenging experience, they pass and I feel better for them. I feel grateful for them. The third part to my kind of journaling exercise is just to think about the day ahead and to think what I need to do, what's coming up. Um, If there's a meeting, what do I want to get out of that meeting? If there's a conversation, how would I like things to go? And that little bit of preparation, again, similar to my prior point, it helps really stand to me. It helps me show up in those times more present, more decisive, and ultimately speaking, sees my day flow better for me. Um, There is this thought, like, you know, this video is about saving time, and here's me talking about all these practices that actually are kind of taking up time, but the fact is that when we slow down and we give ourselves time to actually think about how we want things to unfold, they unfold, of course, that bit better for us. Um, So those are my first kind of three points. Um, The next is... I think really, really important and slightly counterintuitive. Um, Set clear working hours. Um, I did a study. I I initially set out to interview 100 plus, sorry, 100 entrepreneurs, but it was so um, rewarding that it's just something I've continued since. And I have literally interviewed hundreds of entrepreneurs. And one clear pattern that I saw among so many of them was that the ones that were very disciplined with regards to their framing or their their timing around work were more successful. And actually, generally speaking, the ones who worked less earned more. And the ones who had loose boundaries around how much they worked, and to be honest, were working a hell of a lot more, were actually earning less. Now, that takes a little bit of thought, but let me break down in terms of what I took from that. The key thing was that if you work every hour of the day, First up, your life is work. And at the end of the day, we work to live. And I find that the more you're living, the more fun, the more enjoyment you're having, the more proactive we are in work because we we have something to work for. Whereas on the other side of that, when all we do is work, energy can start to really die. And we can find ourselves getting quite, quite, quite passive, quite, cons- um, quite negative, uh, pessimistic, because we've lost a lot of the joy, we've lost a lot of the fun in our life. And of course we get satisfaction from our work, but nothing, um, well, that really pales in comparison to all the other joy and satisfaction we can have from really truly living. So I find that those types that really prioritize living well, they have an energy, they have a charisma about them, And when they show up in work, they show up as a completely different, more energized type, which is, yeah, which makes such a difference. The other thing is that when you have every hour in the day to work, you're less selective in terms of the work you take on. And you've got so much time that you find yourself valuing yourself less. Whereas when you only have so many hours to work, you become very conservative in terms of the work that you take on you find it easier to say no because you only have so many hours to work with. So you want to make sure that you're going to work with the highest performing or the most efficient or um, most positive work you can. You'll also find that when it comes to valuing your time, well, you only have so many hours in the day, um, you'll be much more likely to price yourself accordingly. And that's, that's really, really key because oftentimes most of us undervalue ourselves. 
The real thing though is that when we only have so many hours to work in a day, we become so much more productive. We become so much more efficient. And this is something that just delivers more and more value as people apply themselves to it. Because the fact is, I don't think any of us can appreciate how productive we can be when we need to be. But when we don't need to be, it is amazing how we can pass time. And I think it's so, so important as a result to have set clear boundaries with regards to when you work and when you don't. Not just for the other positives with regards to enjoying your life and being more decisive and valuing yourself, but in actual fact, you will find yourself little by little getting more and more productive with your time. And that is absolutely key. The next point to follow on from there is to be disciplined. And, and discipline is so important. Um, the world will always try and stretch you. The world will always tease you with opportunities to pull you off course. And to ensure that we are managing our time um, as best as possible and to ensure that we are actually living as best as possible, we have to maintain discipline. And this is so hard because of course, when you're a little bit low on energy or a little bit stressed, our discipline goes. And, uh, and the times that we need to be disciplined, it's all the harder to be disciplined. Um, what's nice is on the reverse, when you're looking after yourself, it's all the easier to be disciplined. But it is so important that when you reflect on your time, you will see all these opportunities to improve and to be more efficient. But then when you're in your actual flow, it takes a level of discipline to apply the learnings you know. And, and, and there's a key kind of philosophy in coaching, which is that we have all the answers we, we need to know deep inside us. Um, part of getting those answers is to slow down and to tune into ourselves. So meditating and journaling are going to be fantastic for that. But the other big part is discipline. Like it's actually just applying the stuff we know. And over and above everything that I share in this video, no doubt there are some key things that you know that you're just not doing. And taking or applying a more disciplined approach to how you live is absolutely no doubt going to save you a huge amount of time. So, you know, as much as you're watching this video and as much as you might get some value from it, you already know what you need to do. And I lay you a bet if you took your pen and paper and jotted down some key things and just did them, that in itself would save you so much time. Um, very simple, very functional one when it comes to work is don't have meetings without agendas. It is so easy to waste time in meetings and get carried away with chats and catch-ups and exploring points a little bit too much. One of the simple things is if you're meeting, have a very clear agenda and stick to it. Have your chats out of the meetings, but when you're in a meeting, and God, I remember this when I had a, a large team, I remember sitting in a meeting with 10 people and just actually mentally in my head, clocking up all the, um, all the hourly rates of everybody in the room. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this meeting is running at the guts of, I think it was like a thousand quid every half hour or something like that, which is, is shocking. And uh, we as entrepreneurs, like when we call meetings, we need to be so conscious that they are as quick and efficient as possible. And it is so easy to get pulled off course. So the discipline is important, but the key to really maximizing your time in a meeting is have an agenda, work through it, don't get distracted and get through it as quick as possible. Um, the next point that I want to touch on is decisiveness. Um, there's a really important thing I've kind of come to learn is that a uh, is the power of decision making. Um, there, I believe, is nothing more corruptive to the flow of your day and the flow of your mental state than indecision. Um, I think everything has its timing and when it, something comes up, um, really you have a window of time to make a good decision on it. Um, and if you don't, your head will kind of go into overdrive thinking every scenario and it just becomes harder and harder to actually make a decision. It also starts to take up an enormous amount of brain power, which bleeds into everything else, as in we only have so much capacity. And when your head is distracted with some decision that you're not making, you're going to show up less efficient, less productive, less decisive in everything else. And so indecision has an enormous impact on our time and it can it can slow us down it can uh it can slow us down and it can just unravel so much um so much so to the point that i would say a bad decision made confidently will actually turn pretty damn well um but a 
a good decision made too slowly will turn bad um, and will serve a net negative when you weigh it up against all the negatives that have come from being too slow to make that decision. So the reason I talk about a bad decision made confidently will, can actually turn well is an encouragement for you just to go with your gut, lean in, make better, or sorry, make faster decisions. The speed at which we make decisions can also lend itself to the overall quality of that decision too. And the lack of speed can really, really impact. So again, a good decision made too slow can actually be negative in itself. Um, decisiveness is something that really, yeah, if you want to save time, if you can work on your decision-making capacity and get yourself to a point where you are making decisions faster, you will find so much time opening up in the day. And the last one, the last point that I really want to share with you is have loads and loads of downtime. That study or that continuing study that I do with entrepreneurs, the key thing that I find is that the point that I made, which kind of can be quite hard to grasp, that the most successful entrepreneurs work the least. That was true. But one thing they did work on at an enormous amount was themselves. So they would have very few hours when it came to actually working on their business or working with others. But when it came to working on themselves, they prioritized themselves savagely. And I really, really believe that this kind of downtime, you time, time for yourself, time for you to work on yourself is of the highest priority. There's a, a lovely saying that I love, that I really like um, with regards to personal development is that I'll do me for you. Uh, and the key thing is that the more we work on ourselves, the more we look after ourselves, the greater the benefit to those around us and those things that we're involved in. So you might think you're all fantastic as an entrepreneur, getting stuck into your work and just working, 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 working. But what you're perhaps not as conscious of is that you're wearing yourself down. Actually, every day that you're not resting as well as you should, you're showing up as less. The quality of your decisions, the quality of your energy, it all goes down. But the more you look after yourself, the more time out you take, the more time you spend learning and growing personally, the better that reflects itself professionally speaking. And as a result of taking real time out for downtime, you will see yourself showing up so much better when it comes to work time and when, when it comes to everything else. Um, the fact is, if you're taking time out, if you're looking after yourself, you're gonna show up better in your relationships. A better relationship will have you saving time. Obviously, if it's not good, you'll find yourself quarreling and that will take up time. Um, and that is true in so many other aspects of life. So please, as the last message, don't uh, hesitate to have downtime and take real time for your uh, personal sanity, personal peace and personal growth. It will stand to you over and over again. And it will ultimately speaking, open up so much more spaciousness and so much more time throughout your day. Whew hope there's something in this for you. There are, yeah, I came at this from a number of different angles and I really hope um, there's some good value um, in this. Of course, if you've anything you'd add, I would love to see your points added in the comments below. And if you want to reach out to me, I'm most active on Instagram, so feel free to connect with me there. It's just at Jamie White. Oh, and I feel complete now. So I will finish up, but look very forward to sharing with you again soon.